Welcome back to the track truck project. Today we're going to be working on the trunk <laughs> box. Um, we're relocating the fuel tank from under the driver's seat into the back of the truck uh, to help with weight distribution and uh, balance of the vehicle. So we're going to get started. Let's get going. Co-pilot Jess and her trusty dog Chip Dip. Jess is working. Oops. Jess is working on the new gas tank. How's things going in there, Jess? Dirty. Dirty. <laughs> but good. It's an old marine tank that we're repurposing and going to put it in the back of the Dakota. So Jess's project is to open up, drill all these holes, get in there, clean all the muck out, and get it all prepped for the new parts to make it an actual gas tank. Well, there's the grizzled veteran, lugs himself, hard at it. How are we taking out? Ah, uh, it's coming. Yeah, I, well, no pun intended, so it's Christmas. Yeah, well, it's going to take, it's going to arrive about the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, just tracing wire in and cutting out all the old stuff. And I want to weigh all this for us, folks, because I mean, there's got to be some money in the coffer that we're cutting out this truck. Yeah, so I got the new plug into the uh, backup switch there, so I'm just working on that wiring now, and we get rid of this plug, and yeah, well, it's the backup switch oh, plug, right so just, because uh, this was ground for the ASDS solenoid, and then this one here, over there somewhere. I guess that light. Oh, that's where it got pigtailed into going into the MSD box and the headlight. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll, I mean, that's just a, it was a ground, so we'll just, we'll just create a ground source for everything and, and, uh, yeah, make it all work. Carry on. Carry on. Cool. Okay, so what you can see what we've done here is I, uh, we cut out a template of uh, the hole we want to make in the back of the truck. We drilled the holes, we put some screws in it to hold it in place, and then we took our mini grinder with a cutting disc on it, and we just traced it around the edge until we had a mostly cut out silhouette. Now I didn't cut all the way through at every place because I'm gouging out the rib underneath, and I didn't want this thing falling and hitting me in the head. Who knows, that might have helped things. But at any rate, it also provided the template when I'm underneath the truck, because it's difficult to see, uh, with the plasma cutter going, it gives me a little bit of a perforated daylight shadow to realize where I need to cut underneath in order to make sure that this is, when this is out, we have a clearance. So let's get at it. Okay, as you see, we managed to get the bottom of the box and the bed brace out. And that took just about every tool I own. Um, so now what we have to do is we're going to have to cut into the frame rails because um, the tank is a bit bigger than the space between the rails and then weld gussets and braces and such back on them so uh, that structurally that the frame rails are still strong enough to support the springs that are mounted to them. So we'll carry on. Welcome back guys. So right now we're going to build a plate that goes over the original fuel pump housing uh, in the front of the motor because we're going to a uh, 12 volt fuel pump. We don't use the factory pump but we need to put a plate over it so it doesn't piss oil out all over the motor. So we're going to cut out a block off plate and I've had an old gasket here that I've used as a uh, measuring thing and used that to put it into the computer to come up with a program to make one of these. So let's see how this works.
go. And broke another bit. Jesus. Well, for what it's worth, there it is. I don't know what is so special about this aluminum that this machine didn't like, but it didn't like eating it. However, it's still stinky hot. I'll just let that sit for a bit before I deal with it. Um, all right, so... Yep, it's a perfect match. So, looks like we got it. We'll just let it cool off. Clean it up. Put it on the motor. Okay, so, updating. No, I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to the camera, which is talking to me. Never mind that. Okay, so we did get the battery in the back. And uh, we've gone with an AGM battery because it is sharing uh, the same space as our fuel tank is going to be. As you can just see right there. So we've got the bracketry in for the tank. It's all welded in. We did change our mind. We didn't fit it in between the frame rails because I didn't really like what that was going to do to the frame rails. Um, so I've opted just to park it up on top of the frame rails, um, weld it to the frame, and it'll just bolt right into that position there. So uh, that being said, so what we've done now is we've got wiring this is the worst camera stand. Um, let, let me zoom. And focus. 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 So we've got our battery wires now running from the battery over to what is the back of a night switch. So we've actually put a night switch in this thing. And I'll show you where that is. Just a sec. All right. So we've used the old gas tank opening. We used to have a door on it. Um, and we've put the night switch in there. Jeez, I think I broke it already. Oh, there it is. See? Key. So, when it's all done, the gas door will be back on there. And we can shut off the main power to the truck. And take the key with us. Making it a little harder to steal. Uh, I can't wait till the first time I go to the gas station and have a fuel transfer engineer try to fill the truck up. Anyways. Okay, so they've got that far, and they've got all the new cabling run under the truck and up into the uh, engine compartment. Um, and that's kind of where it's stalled with the rest of the wiring still going. Um, what else have we done? Ah, hang on. Got to sneak in here for a sec. Pardon me, pardon me, excuse me. Come through, pardon me. Okay. I need to show that we have done something for that. Okay, so early on, Originally, there was like one-eighth the space between the front of the pulley and the hole on the rad. Now, we've got about an inch and a half of space. Now, we managed to accomplish that, but... Great, the peanut gallery's here. Normally, I do this myself. Um, so, back to the point. So, what we did to achieve that was we actually... I don't think you're going to be able to pick this up on camera, but in there... This is even confusing the camera. It doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know what to focus on. <laughs> it's dumber than I am. Okay, maybe it isn't. All those wiring's in the way. Okay, somewhere in there, the engine mount bolted to the engine, which also bounced to the mount that's attached to the frame. There's a bolt that runs between the two. We slotted the holes on both engine mounts, and we slotted the tranny mount, and pushed the engine back. <laughs> we had enough room in the engine bay to actually achieve that, so it was much simpler than tearing the front of the motor off and putting in um, electric fuel or water pumps and wiring all that in, because wiring is a word we don't like to use around here. So anyways, we did manage to knock that off the list as well. Focus. Where's the button? Where's the button? Where's the button? There's the button. Found it. So, there we go. Fixed.